Hi guys, welcome to the Improvement Season podcast. This is Steve and I am with my man Pascal. Say hi, Pascal. Hey. And uh, we are going to be talking about some really interesting things. We basically spoke off air for like half an hour and we were like, we should have recorded all of this chat because it was just opening loads of avenues that I think you guys would really appreciate hearing. It's probably some things that I wouldn't normally share and i think this is the only format i could possibly share it like it's not something i can write in an instagram post or on my story or on facebook and same for pascal it's more so something we have to have a discussion over so i'm excited for us to get into that but first of all i'll let pascal kind of go over how his past week has gone and this is actually where i think led to this discussion really how you've had a bit more free time to have a think about things Totally. Um, hey, Steve, by the way. Hey. <laughs> um, no, first and foremost, I want to say that we have always such productive discussions right before we jump on air. Um, and I think that that is the reason because we are not speaking so much throughout the week and we have lots to talk about once we actually see each other. Um, I always love that, actually. This is always a highlight of the, of the week for myself. But yeah, my, my week has been going quite good. I mean, I was doing my overreaching week um, and I could already feel it, especially my lower body. My right knee is already flaring up a little bit. Uh, the, the tibia as well on the left side as well, once again. But I could actually manage to push through it. Um, but it's really the, the appropriate time to do a deload. And I was really looking forward to that, especially after the first lower body session, where I was once again doing heavy squats. And it's just, I mean, recently the squats are destroying me, which is cool. I mean, I think that I'm doing quite a good progress in terms of my lower body, which doesn't necessarily need to be the case for myself. I think I need to bring up more so my upper body, especially the chest and the back area, and also my arms. The entire upper body, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my legs are just like, I don't know, they are, they are quite good at uh, responding to a certain stimulus. So at the end of the week, I was just like, holy shit, yes, finally, it's the deload week. T today, I had my first deload session of the week, uh, took it quite easily. And do you have to, I don't know if that's the same for you, but whenever I approach a deload, I put on some more relaxing music in the gym where I don't listen to music to get hyped up or anything like that. But when I'm in a deload setting, I, I really, I don't know, there's some kind of switch in my head where it's just like, Okay, this is a quite relaxing week compared to what I've done before. So many people have the mentality about a deload that it's super light or super easy, which is not really the case. I mean, it's still heavy weight I'm moving and stuff, but there's just a switch turning in my head where it's just like going from, oh yeah, to, oh yeah. <laughs> if no, that makes I, sense, right? I pretty much... I don't know if I listen to, I think I, I definitely turn it, pause it when I'm doing my sets, but I listen to podcasts most of the time just because. For I, real? Yeah, I walk to the gym with the podcast on and then I just continue playing it for the most part. Oh, then right. I turn it off when I do my sets. So I have no music during my actual working sets most mm -hmm. of the time, unless it's like, no, actually, no, I always pause it because normally it's something I want to kind of listen to. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, I do the same with the, I don't really use, I don't really periodize my music very much. I just basically use it to drown stuff out. And then I have a podcast or no music or nothing during the deload. I mean, I'm not really, um, consciously periodizing it. It's more so I, I'm in the mood for certain kind of genres, but this is all already happening throughout the mesocycles when I'm doing my lower body session. I don't know. It's automatically that I'm putting on more aggressive music. It's not, it's really not that I want to get like all worked up or hyped up, but it's more like, okay, I need a little bit more oomph. Right, instead of um, like in the deload week today, I listen to the one minutes, I listen to a little bit of a classic R&B and soul, like um, Marvin Gaye and stuff, right? Where it's oh, just yeah. like, okay, that's, that's a smooth ride. And I don't know. Um, so yeah, I had my, my first deload session today and last week was a little bit stressful because I had a lot of appointments though, but still I had plenty of time to 
because I'm not going to school anymore this week, this upcoming week, I have my last final exam and then I'm done, which is quite cool. Um, but other than that, I, I don't have um, the, the lessons anymore at the end of the day. So I have five hours more for myself, That's which is lot. quite a bit daunting, to be honest, uh, quite a bit overwhelming, but it gives me the time to actually have the capacity to think uh, to, to really think and that sounds odd for some people but it gives me the capacity not to not think about purely work purely training purely nutrition purely uh purely the school but just more time to self-reflect yeah. which i which i do like i do like to have a little bit of mental capacity to think about okay what is going on in my life how am i really feeling um and that just comes when you really have the time to think about it, because otherwise you're constantly thinking about things you have to do. And finally, it was the first week where I, where my body and my mind really settled down a little bit and gave me the capacity to just think about myself, which was quite cool, actually. Mm. Yeah, I, thought, I actually wanted to, just, I don't know why it's just coming to my head, to touch back on the point of people viewing deloads as um, like light. And the funny thing is, mine towards the end of the week on paper they're very light like it, i reduce loads quite significantly volumes way down but mm. because of the build-up fatigue over the weeks prior they don't feel particularly light like i've got all that fatigue like i go into some of my deload weeks i'm like oh this bar feels so heavy why <laughs> um and i think that's kind of especially at the start of your deload that's kind of how it should almost feel if you've built up like a significant amount of fatigue which if you're deloading you will have so no i just wanted to, i thought that was an interesting point yeah and it's quite funny that you bring it up because i had one great example today because right now i'm doing the the i always confuse or mix them up it's the preacher cross machine i think right where you have the elbow support yeah right i i always do them on a machine because i just recently found that machine and it's freaking great for my biceps they're hard I get such yeah i get such a great bicep contraction um so i started implementing them on this mesocycle and it's quite funny because i reduced the load of course and the volume because it's a deload week and everything was already feeling a little bit heavy but i moved into the the bicep curls and i was just like holy shit that feels heavy and i was I wanted to hit like three to five uh, RER and I ended up with the first set hitting just one RER. It's just like I actually dropped the the load, dropped the volume and still it felt so heavy at the end of the of the of the set that I actually was close to failure where it was just like, holy shit, I, I think I need to drop the load even more. Yeah, I find that like. I, I always try and explain this to clients in deloads like they should feel like there's a sense where you can auto regulate them a little bit like we've spoken about before where I don't know if you just need, your knees are really getting beat up for example then maybe you actually just don't squat and just just maybe just squat with the bar even just you can kind of mishmash them the, the point is to reduce that fatigue and stuff so mm -hmm. no so, like, I like that machine I've been doing it single arm recently and it's like you get a good stretch on the bottom yeah. and then it's just like it's so much it's really hard up at the, at the top i'm just like whoa totally. that's what like at the bottom I'm like ah yeah and then i'm like whoa. And you can, because of the elbow support you can really bring it up um and fully contract without the gravity pulling it down again which is absolutely great i think for peak contraction but uh yeah i mean how about yourself steve so a lot has been going on last week a little so, bit of a stomach bug then yeah. body power that was really shit. Um, um, so overall, it was actually a really good week. Um, so training is pretty boring during a mini cut. Um, the way I set it up, I'm not really looking to push the bounds anywhere. Kind of keeping volume relatively low, increasing uh, load on the bar by little bits. Uh, so training's pretty simple. And actually, I, it's funny because I know you train first thing and quite often fasted, I think. Or just yeah, a protein just shake. Totally with a protein shake and a, a coffee. A coffee, yeah. So I've done that, but not with the coffee the last two days. Mm. Um, and I can definitely do like when I'm on low volume and upper body, I can do that. But I was thinking lower body, could I do this? I don't know if I'm when I'm dieting whether I'd really be able to do a good job for my lower body. Mm. 
Um, but no, it was just interesting. So yeah, this week, training wise, pretty boring. Um, I couldn't train on Thursday because I had a stomach bug and I, that basically wiped me out for the day. I kind of did client updates. I could only do emails. They were really like, that was very nice of them to be able to just accept the email and not my face for a week. Um, so <laughs> that was really handy. That was a lifesaver because I just couldn't stomach standing there and talking. And, mm. um, unfortunately I had to cancel a podcast with Brad Schoenfeld. Thankfully, he's going to reschedule. So we will be doing that, guys. Don't worry. Um, so that day was basically just a bit wasted. And she like gets me into, I think I did a Instagram post on uh, on this in terms of training when sick. And basically above above the neck or the neck and above, like I can, I pretty much always can train. Um, but below the neck, it's just like absolutely no go. Um, I just, there's an uh, even upper body. I don't think I could have gone in there. I went for a few walks. And I actually walked past the gym and I was like, oh, I could go in and do my like calves maybe. I was like, nah, I'm just not even stepping in that place. I just, stomach bug, don't know what it was. Woke up in the middle of the night and I just wasn't feeling right. And then woke up and I was just like, I don't even, I don't want to eat. I can't do anything. Um, so yeah, that day was basically a day of wasted. Uh, but the rest of the week was all good. Um, pretty much stat, I've kind of hit macros to 200 calories pretty much for the entire week. That day I was a bit under because um, I just couldn't stomach more food, um, but managed to secure protein and everything and was back 100% yesterday and basically back to my usual self on Friday. Basically dropped, I think my low, my weigh in this morning was like 178 pounds or so. I started at 185, so that's like seven pounds in the two weeks so far. Um, but obviously this is a low and I reckon I'd probably stabilize at this low point during this week. So if I like finish off the mini cut uh, for three weeks, I'll probably have lost about seven pounds. And I'd say probably mm. half of that is like pure fat. Maybe half of that's water. Um, but I look to be at the like update photos this morning. I'd say I was hovering above like around the 12% mark, maybe uh, somewhere there. So like I'm in a really good ballpark and definitely I, part of me is considering massing from tomorrow, but I think I'm going to finish off this week and then get back into massing because I haven't planned anything to get into massing. So I'd mm -hmm. be like, shit, what do I do? Like, not that I'd need to do loads to change things up, but I haven't got like my shopping done, like for loads of, I haven't got like no carbs in at the moment. <laughs> the true problem, so to exactly. speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think one more week will be good as well because at the start of the mini cut, I think I spoke about this, I was surprised how hard I was hit hunger and energy levels, mm -hmm. um, which shouldn't be surprising, I guess, because I dropped 400 grams of carbs. But um, by the end of this week, and maybe related to the stomach bug, my hunger's just been not bad at all, and my energy levels have been good. So I'm hoping that that'll just carry over into this next week, and it's kind of like, it'll be a bit of an easy week. And then I'll get into massing. I'll probably deload first. Um, not because... My upper body, I don't feel like I need to necessarily deload. I probably will need to for my lower body um, just because squats are fucking hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think that's what I'll do. Um, but I'm not completely 100% set on that plan. But yeah, I'm just excited to get back into Massey. And it's been a really successful mini cut. Everything's gone kind of really smoothly. I think if I was to change anything, I might have just lowered my uh, quad volume a little bit more. Um, not gone... I think I'm on my quad dominant day, I'm doing three sets of heavy squats and then three mm. sets of Smith machine squats. And I feel like that's probably above minimum effective considering I then do four sets of Smith machine squats my next day. So that's like 10 mm. sets, I f I, which is actually like for me, I don't know, 10 sets for my quads is like, it's quite a, like they just take a fucking beating from that. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, considering the movements you're doing. Yeah, that's not like like six sets of leg extensions or something, right? From which you probably could recover quite quicker than three sets of squats, than yeah. three or four sets of Smith machine squats. And right? it's complete range of motion, especially when you're looking at your Smith machine squats, you're just like going yeah, like really, <laughs> yeah. really teabagging style. I like the, the Smith machine squats are actually really enjoying those. Um, they're hard though. Like you have to yeah, totally. really pace yourself. Um, but especially I'm... when, you, um, sorry to interrupt sorry. you there, but for me, it's always the case that I need to focus on not shooting my hips back because they yes. want to help out and you really need to try to stay upright and just push with your legs. 
I find pausing at the bottom helps me a lot with that. I don't mm. really like, and I think it's just a safe, safer to do on a Smith machine. Tell me about it just because you're going to such a deep angle on areas. It just, for me, having a slight pause there stops me then shooting back and get, lets me reposition a bit. So that's been good. Um, I'm excited because I think next mesocycle, I'm going to be introducing hack squats. I have to go to a different gym, um, get the tube <laughs> to a different gym, but I, I think I'm going to be at introducing hack squats just because I've never really, I don't think I've ever had a hack squat machine ever. Available. For real? No. Not even at the soul gym? No, I think it was a V squat they had and that yeah. actually caused my um, knee and hip to flare up and I had that problem. So, so crazy how many different variations of a hack squat yeah. machine there is. I only tried one and that is, it's all right. It doesn't really feel that natural to me. Um, only when I face towards the machine. That's the but V squat. I, I think that's the same as the head at so oh, okay. the V squat type thing. Okay. But then again, it's just like I could could then go over to a Smith machine squat yeah. and gives me probably more bang for my buck than doing it that, that way. At yeah. least that's my impression of it. I don't think a Smith machine squat's too different from a hack. It's just vertical angle versus a slight, like, mm. I think you can probably... And, put that, and I mean, it helps you not pushing your hips back. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You can put it all quad. Um, so that's, I, it's just inconvenient to have to travel to a different gym. So I'm just... Yeah. It's not too far. It's like a probably an extra 15 minutes to my journey time or 20 minutes maybe, but... I don't know if maybe it will be worth it for one session a week if I do that on like the weekend or something, but we'll see. So no, all things are going well. Uh, very happy. And what about the body power, mate? Oh yes, it was I, I heard power. that you went there to, to see all your Instagram uh, heroes, <laughs> like the Jim Shark crew and stuff like that. Jim Shark aren't there, mate. They're not there. What? No, this for is real? really smart. Yeah, they um, all the big brands, like not the all the big brands, but the biggest brands aren't there, which is really interesting, and it kind of gives a bit of a story of where body power is going those talks of maybe being like maybe one of the last ones that they're going to do because it's just not being as successful as it was crazy um, so gymshark actually had a pop-up store outside of body power which is Holy so smart shit. because people bought tickets um they normally buy like maybe three uh, a weekend ticket and they mm -hmm. just bought a day pass and then went to the next day, just went to the Gymshark booth because they had like shitloads of Actually quite there. a smart, smart move. Yeah, really own. smart. It's a Birmingham brand, isn't it? Gymshark. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It is British. I don't know if it is, if they're Birmingham based or not. I think apparently the guy sold it. So I don't know. I don't know. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, shit. I, I don't really pay attention to Gymsharky stuff as you probably yeah, yeah, realize. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, but it was nice to meet up with just general people um, like out in the crowd. And it's kind of weird being noticed and the brand being noticed. So I met, obviously, AJ, met up with um, Chris, uh, why have I forgotten his name? Both Chris's, uh, Chris Elkins and Chris Berrapin. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Oh. Um, so yeah, I spoke to him for quite a while, actually. He's a really nice guy. I was actually surprised how small Chris Elkins was. He's a short dude, um, but he's shredded. And <laughs> that, that's making it up, or what? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, just I, I won't try and name everyone because I'll end up forgetting people, and uh, that, that's never a nice thing. You know how bad I am with yeah. names. Um, yeah, but it, so... it was the day went pretty quick. Just talking mostly, just chatting to people, walking around. The, all you get is like you get like little slithers of protein bar samples so i just put into my fitness pad like two protein bars or something yeah. um i did buy some protein some phd smart protein which okay. is apparently is really nice i think cool. you know thomas moore tmc yeah. cycles if anyone follows him he like on one of his stories he said it's the nicest protein he's ever had it's like mm. peanut butter smart protein i he mean actually... they are doing or they're making fantastic protein bars so but, yeah so their protein was really nice. Their protein is good as well. It was a good offer, so I bought that. Um, Yorkie. Have you ever had a Yorkie, Pascal? What's a Yorkie? It's like a chocolate bar, like chunky chocolate bar by Nestle. No, never heard of it. They have Yorkie protein bars. They have 10 grams of protein, but they were just giving these out. So I've got like five, <laughs> uh, five of those. Um, but no, it was, a nice, it was a nice day. Nice to see people. Um, but Body Power, I think it was like four years since I'd been to Body Power and... Um, I'm glad I went, I think, 
No, I am glad I went, but <laughs> I'm glad it was only one day. I think if I was like on a booth, or like if De Novo had a booth, that would have been really cool um, to hang out with the like the guys from De Novo and Luke and everyone. Um, but yeah, it was it was all right. Um, nothing to kind of write home about. I think the the academy was probably quite good, where Martin McDonald was doing talks and things. But I, being only there for a day, I wasn't kind of gonna just sit in there and watch all those did meet uh scott stevenson who we had on the podcast yeah cool. um, which was fun he's as you imagine in real life just a really nice guy yeah. um super tanned <laughs> so tanned <laughs> i felt so pale next to him <laughs> so no that was quite cool um can you can you tell me about what, what it's all about with the posing uh when it comes to males posing next to each other and pointing the finger at each other i don't really know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> just like this is i'm pointing at this person because they're pointing at me and I don't it's know. just so funny i was just going through all my feeds and everyone from the uk was at body power at least it seems like it and I, every single guy is always doing that move with pointing the finger next to the other person I think it's I'm, just like I'm look just who like, i'm with like this yeah, is my dude be. <laughs> better would be and i'm just always like what it's all about i mean should have done a bro fest actually yeah um, and actually the guy that owns gym gym buddy donuts mm -hmm. you might have seen i had a selfie with him where i completely out angled him with my bicep and uh, topless. sorry and he was topless yeah he was topless he wanted to <laughs> get his top off um but he was he gave me like a special edition donut which was pretty cool because i've eaten their donuts before and he recognized me and wanted to have a chat about They're releasing it's like a protein donut that's going to have a six month shelf life, so it's going to be like available in supermarkets, oh, which crazy. is pretty cool. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's not what it was, but it, like it was mad in the years I went before. Like I know one year I went, the last year I went, Gymshark had a booth, and I think I got three free T-shirts, like Gymshark quality oh, yeah. T-shirts. Yeah, crazy. they're actually like decent T-shirts. Um, well, it's, it's, this is the quality actually quite good because I never had something from them. I never had it in my hands, never, never really seen anything in real life, to be honest. Those t-shirts were all right. They fit pretty nice. Um, mm. From what I've heard, most people are fairly satisfied. I, I have not got good experience with, I mean, I only bought, I think I bought one vest from them years ago. And I... The, the only time I've seen uh, Gymshark clothes in real life was... Every once in a while at my gym, a girl is wearing some kind of suit. But those are good. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, yeah. I'm not going to the girl and asking whether I can actually touch the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> just for the sake of, yeah, I, I just want, want to. I'm curious about the material and the quality of, the, <laughs> of it. So can I please touch it? No, it's, it's a little bit weird so no. i almost bought a vest but then i was like no we're going to do an order soon where i'm going to have tons of revived vests so yeah, like, totally. i much prefer to have our own and rep the brand so cool we can probably move on to kind of what you ended up talking about almost was your self-reflection and where yeah. that led you to because i think that's what is going to be most interesting about this podcast to be honest totally and uh, i mean i touched on it as you mentioned already that During the last week or the past weeks, I have more and more time for myself, which is amazing. I mean, uh, over the past years, I've been working so much and there was never really the time where I can sit down and really just just have the capacity to think and go. And it sounds a little bit cheesy. Get yourself into your own kind of state of mindset. Right. And really just sit down and think about yourself. Um, and honestly, when you really think about it. Who has ever taken the time just to sit down for 15 minutes, stare at a blank wall, just try to focus your thoughts? It's not what I've been doing. Not to say that I, I just did that. But just in a world where we are so um, – there's so much going on in our daily lives. We don't take the time anymore to gather our thoughts and really think about – our current state, our current mood, our current well-being and stuff like that. And I like something like that, right? And for me, it's always when I'm walking that uh, I have the capacity to then 
gather my thoughts. But this is hasn't happened over the past years simply because there was always something going on in my life. I either needed to think about work, I needed to think about the next lesson, the next exam, next test, um, or anything like that. Right? I never had the capacity to really just think for myself and what is going on in my life. And right now, slowly, it comes back, which is amazing. I also have the time finally to to just read for myself. So read things I want to read and not things I have to read for whatever the reason might be, right? Uh, that is just so refreshing. And because I had the time then, the thoughts come back and the capacity comes back to really be self-reflective. And I just had the thoughts. So two things happened. The other, one of the things I don't want to touch on this time, um, but the other thought I had was just like, there was the moment I was sitting down and all of a sudden I had the thought about um, body composition and the way you perceive yourself. And I came to the realization that um, I honestly needed to say to myself that I've never been in a state the entire life where I have been happy and satisfied with the way I looked. Never, never even once. There has never been a time in my life where I just was satisfied and happy with the way I looked, which is quite odd. And we talked about it previously already that I see myself as a quite strong personality. I'm quite thick skinned, but when it comes to um, the visual appearance, I I don't know why, but it's just like I, I'm a little bit more fragile in that area, right? And when, when I really thought about it and I thought about it in an objective manner, I, I wasn't really emotional or something where I was just like, oh my God, this is, this is sad or uh, I wasn't really ex- in an excited state or something, but it just came to my mind and I really th- thought about it and, and just thought about why it might be the case. And it's actually quite a sad thing to say that you've never been in a state where you can truly say that you've been satisfied and happy with the way you looked. I think it it was interesting to me because I think I, I agree it's not a nice thing, but it didn't actually shock me because of I and I don't think it will shock many of the listeners. It might initially, and it did initially. I was like, oh, that sounds shocking. That's not very nice. But then I thought about it. And I thought about it for myself, and I was like, you know what? I'm not sure I have really either certainly not satisfied i do think there are certain like photos i've had where i'm like yeah i look like decent i'm like quite happy with that and i'd share them um like on instagram and things but i don't think i've ever looked at something and thought like that's enough for me like that's satisfaction uh i don't think i'll ever have that i don't think any bodybuilders will ever have that in their lives which Mm -hmm. is kind of sad and this is why i guess you get the people who talk about like if you think having a six pack is going to solve all your problems because that's your goal and like that's everything to you once you've got that you what you will not be satisfied you will not be happy because it's not about that and life isn't about that yeah yeah totally but i also think that you need to decipher when it comes to bodybuilding because such a visual visually uh being judged sport right or it's purely visual um and when it comes to bodybuilding, you have a specific goal that is probably unachievable because once you got to a specific goal, you already set the standards a little, to the next level or a little bit higher for yourself. So you're always chasing the carrot, but actually you never will get to the carrot, right? Um, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't make you blind of acknowledging what you achieved so far. And I think that when I take a look at myself, and to be absolutely honest, I came a long way. I changed a lot in my body composition. Looking back like seven years when I was weighing 64 kilograms as a skinny fat dude, I mean, I put on like 20, 30 kilograms, not not everything muscle, of course, but um, still a massive body composition. And I think I said it the last time already that I, I met a friend at the gym and she was asking me whether I could actually weigh 64 kilograms yeah. now. And I think I couldn't even when I were stage ready, 
right? Um, so I changed massively and I, I did a lot already and I achieved a lot already, but I'm blind to the fact of acknowledging it. And I'm still, I think that there's not much difference in how I perceive myself now compared to how I perceive myself back in the days. Even though that I changed drastically visually, I think that the mental perspective is quite similar. It's definitely not the same. Of course, you're becoming more mature. You you grow as a person. You set other priorities in life. But I still think that there are certain similarities between the two per mental kind of states I had like six, seven years ago compared to now. And I was hoping now when I reflect upon it that I also grew I would have expected that exactly what you said, that once I get to a specific goal, I'll be more happier or something. Never, <laughs> I've never been there. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that, I will, that I'll ever get there. And that's actually quite sad. And I don't know if that's, I mean, I, I'm not really frustrated about it. And I'm not working myself up like, Oh, but I had those goals and I didn't achieve it and I was expecting me to be happy and now I'm in a much more darker place. That's not the case. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm, uh, I, I, all I'm saying is that I expected that with the visual appearance, there comes a mental change as well. And once again, that did happen to some extent, but not from a self perceptive perceptive kind of fashion if that makes sense yeah it's interesting i mean i'm the same like i i'm proud of where i've come from and where i've developed my physique but i know i'll never be satisfied because my actual goal physiques or my goal of how i'd like to look i know is never going to be achievable for me which is kind of sad in many ways but this is why then loving the process of bodybuilding and seeing your physique develop is so important and i think especially as us guys as coaches loving doing that for other people is where our power comes in and kind of i love like it i, I don't even find it hard to have clients who are, have better physiques than like our own because it's actually nice that you can help them achieve a physique that you never could it's kind of like a as a dad and you, you have your son it's like I could never be that good at football, so I want, I'm want i going to help you be the best footballer you can be. And obviously, so long as the son wants that goal as well, and as our clients, like they want the goal of doing their absolute best on stage. And if I can get someone to be a pro bodybuilder, that for me is like better than myself almost winning, or at least like I, if I can't achieve it, at least I can help other people achieve it, which I think as a coach, like I think that's really powerful. Totally. Um, I don't know... We we also talked about kind of how this holds you back from sharing because if you're not satisfied and like happy with your physique, you don't want to share that with other people. And I think I got to a point with my own progress and everything where I was happy enough to share. Like I started up the YouTube video years ago. I look back at those posing videos and you've seen them, Pascal, and probably some of the <laughs> listeners have. And if you haven't, you're probably uh -huh. going to go to those, like some of my first videos and I was posing it. I look terrible. Like to me now, I look terrible. But at the time I was like, I don't look too bad. Like I look okay. And I, I think I do actually look okay. In my head, I still think I look terrible. But and so, like some of the listeners, when people who view that will probably think I look terrible. Others might think I look all right. But I got to a stage where I was happy to share that. And then the feedback I got... Actually, initially, I got very mixed feedback. I got some people absolutely trolling the shit out of me when I first did it. But I got other people and a few who were really happy that I would share it because I think there's a lot of people in our situations where we aren't genetic elite, where we don't look amazing. We're a body type, but we are we get into good shape. And I think there's thousands upon thousands of people who would love to be the shape we're in, but because we don't share it and we don't share our journey there and the struggles and our thoughts and perceptions of ourselves, sometimes they feel like, there aren't other people like them mm -hmm. and I don't know I'd love for you to get to a point just as a friend where you feel happy enough to share that progress and be proud enough to share it and then I think you'll get and I think you do already on Instagram whenever you do share your ideas your thoughts your lifts you get really good feedback because people are like I like hearing this other perspective 
and it's the same for me i get some critical feedback when i share my progress and things like i said to you i shared a photo and someone was like you look like you've made no progress at all and i sometimes those hit me but you have to kind of ignore those and take on the positive ones and you get you'll get enough positive ones to make it reinforcing you realize sharing your progress sharing your struggles of someone who isn't maybe the genetic elite and i don't like bringing up genetics all the time but we do have struggles like you've come from a background of like drugs and rock and roll basically like <laughs> that's like the completely yeah. different being a fat kid exactly you had, you're almost diabetic and i've gone from a, a background of being incredibly skinny and then having the accident the low testosterone levels like we've gone through some hard times so like we can we can say we're not like gifted in that area like we've had some things to go through that aren't going to allow us to maybe be the best and i definitely think us sharing our progress helps many of the other people who are like the the underdogs or the people who are struggling um i don't know where i'm really going with that <laughs> no I, I i have so many things to say actually uh, on what you just uh, mentioned and this is first and foremost a thing that external or objective validity is always a good thing that's where the value of a coach comes into play right um getting feedback from a source you trust invaluable yeah, yeah. already right when it comes to the internet though and sharing your progress there there will always be the ones who want to see the world burn and there there will always be the ones Thanos who, sorry what? <laughs> Thanos, Thanos? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there will always be the ones who because the internet gives everyone a voice and not always is that appropriate right but because everyone gets a voice they can share their opinion whether it is appropriate or not that's that's up for debate right um and how you can shake it off or not impact you that's really tough because every once in a while a negative feedback can outweigh all the positive feedbacks or all the positive comments right um and if you share your progress you, you simply also have to accept that there are probably people who are a little bit jealous um or absolutely brutally honest with you right and you have to learn to then deal with these kind of people mm -hmm. right whether it is negative whether it is positive um but uh, once again i think that it probably out outweighs the the cons so the pros you were talking about with sharing your progress for the people uh, to then realize that not everyone is like the top 100 instagram feed kind of fitness people right um we already talked about the social media so often and most of the time it's just like people post pictures of their contest prep shape it's just a matter of fact right and even if there are some people who post pictures in their off season they are most of the time the genetic elite um, potentially even enhanced but that's that's another topic for itself so uh, it's it's good and valuable to share your progress and your struggles as well so that the people <laughs> know that they aren't alone with first and foremost not being the genetic elite and not feeling potentially 100% um, comfortable in their own skin and their own journey but uh, bringing it all back to what you said the journey is actually the thing and not the outcome of the, the end product this is where i try to find peace for myself as well and try to be more about uh, more mature with that entire approach to talk myself down and, and realize that I still have a long way to go if I train correctly and intelligently and where my my limit is I have no idea and this is something I can take to my advantage and work towards to instead of holding myself back and only focusing on okay I've, I've never actually been satisfied with my body that doesn't mean that I won't be in the future and even if I'm not fully satisfied with the way I looked or even if I set some goals for myself and I don't achieve them I think with with the age comes maturity and also other priorities and you're not defined by the way you look you're defined by the way um the your character traits the person you are from the inside and i know for some people it's just like what the fuck is this guy talking about but i mean uh, 
your your visual appearance um, and the 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 shape of your body doesn't really tell anybody in your world who you are and just just look at the most powerful people in the world the politi politicians such as i can bring up good example angela merkel like she's counselor here in germany since a long time already she's in europe one of the key players uh, in, in politics and man Is, would, you, would you think less of her because she has a round body or anything like that? Not at all. Now, someone like Donald Trump, for example, you can think of him whatever you want. And I don't want to make it to a, a discussion about politics. But, man, he is currently the most powerful man on the planet. That's scary. And, uh, <laughs> it is scary, yeah. And, and do you... Do you, when you look at him, think about his body shape? Absolutely not. Right? You think you definitely think about other aspects. So that's not really what defines you. But we are in a fitness industry where people get judged by their visual appearance, but that doesn't mean you you have to be an individual who judges other people because based on their visual appearance, or you have to value yourself based on that. I think this is interesting because when we talk about then physique athletes and bodybuilding you are then judged directly on your physique and it doesn't take into account anything else which is an interesting question that i'm going to have to put to you pascal in that do you think your perception of being unsatisfied and not happy with how you're looking would prevent you from stepping on stage and do you feel like obviously your goal was to compete in 2019 Do you feel like you'll be ready by then at the moment with how things are going? Quite an interesting question and definitely something I thought of uh, a couple of times already, especially when I, when I watch different bodybuilding shows um, where you see people who are like, you, you look at them and think, okay, you could have been a little bit more in shape and stuff like that, right? But then you forget about that some people don't compete to be the absolute best on stage or be super highly competitive you have to but, do that Pascal. but but they do it because they want to challenge this themselves and simply want to experience that and that is what's what's making them happy yeah. it's not to have the striated glutes and the christmas tree on stage or be the most jacked and biggest but more so the challenge and i think that there's so much value in learning from these people that it's not about the end product being the absolute best but more so to be the best version of yourself and to challenge yourself every single time in life because there are so many so many challenges we don't go get ourselves into because we are potentially a little bit afraid of failing and we are afraid of um of ourselves and what that could make to us right and a good example isn't really just like um there i think there's a trend in our generation that people are too flexible in their lives that they don't settle themselves that they don't set specific goals for themselves in the long term at least that's the case in berlin everyone wants to be a little bit flexible because it's the cool thing right nobody wants to get into a relationship because then they are bound and stuck there or nobody wants to be uh, have a nine to five job because right that that's a commitment but i think and that's just a theory i have it's more so that they are afraid of commit to a specific goal and some um duties and obligations then because in the end they could then fail yeah because when they set a goal for themselves it could potentially fail but if you don't set any goals for yourself you can't fail you can't lose you can't fail right and then you're not a failure in society and especially not for yourself but i don't think that this is an appropriate way to go because you have to challenge yourself we talked about it so often in the past that i learned the most from fail uh, failing and from failures in my life, right? And I think that when it comes to this, so my context with competing, um, I think due to the nature of my person or personality, I want I want to be the very best. 
and that could potentially be detrimental. I want to get on stage with that Christmas tree with striated glutes being absolutely crisp so that when I step on stage, everyone is just like, holy shit, um, maybe I'm not winning, but I just want to blow everyone away. If then there's someone who's bigger and more conditioned than I am, that's absolutely fine. But I want to at least take my body to the absolute extreme levels. And I could imagine that if I, 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 won't, if I wouldn't get there, then I wouldn't be satisfied with myself. And I wouldn't, it could potentially end up being like, okay, then I'm not competing at all. Even that I, that I got that far in my journey, right? And I'm so close to actually make it, but just because there's missing that small, tiny thing, because I'm such a perf perfectionist and I hate like losing small, minor details on, on the track. Um, but that's not always the best thing and potentially, yeah. So it's an interesting question, but only the future can tell, I think. And that's why it's so important that I'm well prepared and I fucking do what is required for myself. I, uh, you touched on so many things I could talk about. Um, <laughs> something I definitely want to talk about is the, the idea that you shouldn't compete unless you're competing to win. And I think obviously everyone who's competing wants to win but some people are a little bit more realistic potentially or their actual outcome from what they're doing isn't to win i never went into my 2017 season with the idea to go and win my idea of winning was beating my past performances uh, so long as i went on stage with a better physique and I'd improved on what I had done in the past, that was a win for me. And I almost feel like what you said there in terms of some people don't have that ambition to win because maybe some people are realistic in that they, they know they have their own limitations. They know they're not kind of set up for that. And if they do win, it's kind of like, well, that was a shock. Like um, someone better on the day could have turned up quite easily and they didn't because that could happen as well. And I think that's absolutely fine to go in there for just the objective of doing it for yourself uh, because it is a journey and that is the best physique that you can present on stage. And everyone has different backgrounds in terms of health, in terms of genetic health, in terms of environmental health, in terms of environmental stresses, in terms of life commitments, in terms of job, wife, family, all of those things, what could have happened. And um, for some people, the Christmas tree and striated glutes might actually not be in their reach. I think some people underestimate the uh, so many things go into competing. Uh, oh. and, and yes, we can all get big. Like you can look like a big jacked guy. You can put on lots of weight and lift heavy weights. That doesn't, the, the most thing that entails is making sure to eat plenty and lift hard. Like there's, that goes into it. But actually to get conditioned like and shredded that take that takes us something that some people don't have uh, and that's why bodybuilding is the extreme sport it is because it has that conditioning element um other sports don't have that so yeah i think it could it could stop you competing if you are your goal is to step on stage with the christmas tree and stride glutes totally. I, i'm not going to say i don't think they are out of your reach but just imagine if they were, and then that could actually stop you competing. I'd say that would be oh. kind of a bit of a sad thing only for me, for you, because I think, especially for a first time competitive, like it's never your best time. It just never is. Every time after that should be and will be better. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the thing is um, that I, I've never gotten that lean where I could say, okay, I'm actually predisposed, if you want to call it that, to actually get a Christmas tree or striated glutes. Um, because right now my biggest concern is simply not to be, be big enough to have the muscle maturity and stuff like that. And then on the other hand, to be absolutely fair, I'm not, I'm, I'm probably not the best, um, built for bodybuilding also. So I have tattoos, I have loose skin, I have stretch marks, right uh, that, that could potentially play a role as well i don't know uh will we will see but um all these kind of things and my muscle bellies most of the time i'm not really the biggest guy so um i have lots of concerns that's for sure but i all, also want to 
I, I just want to raise that goal and I wanted to reach it last year already and it was just such a disappointment for myself to not make that happen. Um, so I want to actually really, really desperately to make it happen and I don't know if that's the best recipe because I don't think that you should ever do something out of desperation or um, from a too emotional perspective. No, 100%. And I actually think the fact that you went through that competitive season and you got like you were in shooting range of like you, you probably had, I don't know how many pounds you had to lose at most 10. Yeah, to, something to like that. To stage conditioning, which is in shooting range. Like that's, that's the dig, like, but you'd already had to dig through <laughs> areas where you shouldn't have had to. Yeah. You've been through that now, so you can actually lay foundations to set yourself up for success, which I know you've been doing a lot of thinking about. And I don't, I, I don't know why this, this thought comes into my mind particularly, and I don't know the situation at all. And, uh, but I do look at someone like Jeff Albert, um, where he compete, tried to compete that year, and then he was looking to compete this year, and again, couldn't. I don't know why exactly, but I feel mm. like part of the reason he maybe wanted to compete this year was because of he felt like he failed and there was a bit of maybe the disparity, the emotional attachment to the stage. And so for you to have taken a whole year away, I think is going to have been really important. And even if you needed to take another year to set yourself up for the best, most successful prep, I think would be better than to go into a prep and consider the fact that you might not be ready just yet. I prefer, yeah. like, with clients, we'd be like, yeah, more time. But just if we can totally. set yourself up better. And I think that's why a lot of people end up yo-yo dieting because they never actually set themselves up for a good, successful, clean diet. Yeah. And it's so gratifying when you do. But it takes a while to get there because you end up, like I was talking to uh, Damien yesterday, my client, mm -hmm. and he was like, mate, you're, you've, you've just gone through, like, a long-term, like, six-month mass. And now you've done a mini cut and you're leaner than me. And I've been cutting like for ages <laughs> and I'm like, you, I've gone through so much historical bouncing and back and forth. I um, mean, if I knew how to do everything the right way straight away, it would have been so much smoother. And mm. in fact, I spoke to someone else yesterday who um, has just started going on steroids. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly the details, but he was like, it's insane because... I'm now going on them and I know how to do everything. It's like newbie gains, but you know how to train, how to yeah. eat. And imagine that. And that's kind of how things are becoming for me in terms of when I go through massing and cutting phases. It's like, because I know how to do it every time, it's so much more efficient and effective. Uh, but it takes a while to get there. And the totally. non-emotional attachments, the hard, it's really, really hard. Absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm really um, curious to see how I'm actually perceiving myself if I actually get in that condition. Right? Well, what that makes to my mindset. Because I don't think that something will change. Yes, I will be probably proud of an achievement. Yeah. But will I be proud on the way I look? Will I be satisfied with the way I look? I can guarantee I, I, you won't be satisfied. No. And that that's just like... Knowing that already, right, um, having <laughs> gone through all body compositions, being overly fat, being skinny fat, being, being quite lean muscularly, being <laughs> quite heavy muscularly, it's just like, and then finally being stage lean, it's just like, um, the only thing that changes along the way is just your 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 energy levels, your overall well-being, but um, the satisfaction in life and stuff like that and how you perceive yourself has never really changed. Yes, every once in a while it moves from one end where you feel a little bit more attractive to a little bit less attractive, but it was never like – Holy shit, I'm smoking hot now. I fucking love the way I look. Um, to holy shit, I'm, I'm just such an ugly piece of shit. Never happened, right? And I don't think that this is going to make such a big change. But I'm curious to see uh, what that will do to me. But I also think that everything that happened right now and also the, the, the thought I had with 
or the realization I had that I've never been at a place body composition wise and visually that I was happy and satisfied with the way I look is a good thing I think because otherwise you're always unknowingly and blindly walking through the streets I say where it's just like I don't know what is wrong with me but there's something that that is bugging me and bothering me all the time and just being aware of what might be the cause is pretty valuable and thus I'm going into that entire thing with a conscious prep with an awareness and more so from a curious perspective as a self-experiment what is that actually doing to myself and because you then have a little bit more of a distance to it you can actually detach yourself from being too emotional to that state I think um, to go back to something that you said made me think about whether I think a lot of people are a bit body dysmorphic in that they view themselves a little bit wrongly some people view themselves to be more attractive and maybe more aesthetic than they are and other people the opposite way you will see those like people walking down the street and you're like yeah you shouldn't be showing that much skin i'm not sure about that and maybe they're just that confident in themselves yeah. that they look that great which is absolutely fine for them to be doing obviously um but then you get people who are like they're hide behind clothing and they're hide behind maybe not sharing things and uh, i know i've had I've posted before, I think, where I'm like, oh, I have like, I'm not happy with my abs and my quads. And then someone will post like, I wish I had those abs and quads. And I'm like, wow, like, you wish you had, really? Like, you could wish for so much better, but they wish Mm -hmm. they had mine, which is sometimes you do look at yourself a bit wrongly. And I think we all do it as like physique competitors. Like, I -hmm. I reckon if you showed me your photos, I'd probably be like, "Hmm, actually, Pascal, like, I was expecting a lot worse than this. Like, or I, I, you would say, holy shit, <laughs> that piece of shit. Get the fuck out of Rebel Stronger. <laughs> that, there is a um, part of our contract that is a clause. You have to be within a shooting range of uh, 18% to 12%. 8 to 12% percent year round. <laughs> that would be so bad actually that <laughs> creates although that's a completely different issue but um, like models who have to keep in that rep that's yeah awful um just, just imagine uh working for abercrombie and fitch yeah standing topless Everyone stares at you <laughs> yeah standing topless in a shop i don't know if that's actually the case i've never been to an abercrombie and fitch a store do that. but um i could imagine that 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 is the case but anyway I don't think I had anything. We've come to almost an hour, to be honest. I don't know if we have a lot more to add. I think we've just had, just I think we've probably voiced a lot of things that maybe people have been thinking. And I'd love feedback on this episode, in fact, if there are any questions or some thoughts or discussions that we've kind of opened up to people. Um, I'm, because I think I'm just a step ahead of you in many ways, Pascal, in terms of my ability to then share my own progress to people and i think yeah. once you show that and once you get like you said show that vulnerability and people really respect you for it and they they gratify you for it then you feel better about it and you you end up developing a bit of a i like sharing this and actually this helps me with my progress because like we spoke off air there's i mean there's loads of people that don't and they must that part of the reason they don't must be that worry no no, I absolutely agree that you are probably a little bit more ahead of me in that regard, or even quite ahead. Not my spots. <laughs> um, because when we take a and I just want to give people a little bit of perspective, because I even have a hard time sharing uh, my stuff with Steve, right? And Steve is my best mate. So let that sink, digest that, and think about that. I mean, what that actually means when you already have problems with sharing something like that with your best mate. And it's, it's, there's also a personality difference between us in that I'm a sharer. <laughs> I just do. Um, like I will, <laughs> if, if Pascal gave me voice messages every day, like I would give him like voice messages to share in my life in every <laughs> single way, every single thought. Whereas Pascal is someone who you like to keep things to yourself. Um, and I think sometimes my I make myself a bit too vulnerable in some ways. I share too much, maybe. And it creates a little bit of anxiety that I could control. And I think in some ways, Pascal could, and you think you probably agree, that you could share a little bit more and it would help you. And there is yeah. finding that fine line. 
So it's quite interesting because uh, it's not the first time I heard something like that. And a friend of mine just recently, once again, told me that um, she has a hard time reading me. Oh, yeah, I bet. Because, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm willing to share things when I get asked about things. But from my end, it's just, especially when it's really like deep things that are going on inside of me, right? Things that I deal with myself and I haven't really coped with and overcome or anything. Because I'm in the process of working on it myself, I have a hard time sharing it and also a hard time putting it into words. And it's not the first time that I heard some people tell me that they have a really hard time reading me in general and that, yes, they have the feeling they know me, but not not really knowing me because there's always it's like it's like i don't know I, a video game you have different levels to get to right and you have to unlock a certain level to get to the next level right and um for me like there's there's one step to the next level which is really hard to get into um and not many actually or i don't let many people into that level but that's that's i, I think, like that analogy you're that my, mysterious guy <laughs> yeah the, but that's that's something i think i have to work on myself and once again i think that when you are aware of something like that you can then really work on it instead of just ignoring it or being being i don't know a little bit naive about it like no, I'm perfectly fine. I don't have to change anything. That's why I also think that um, something that like seeing a professional when it comes to the mental aspect is something that way more people need to do in society yeah. and is not widely accepted so far no. societal, which is a sad thing because the people I know of who have seen a professional Everyone was just like saying that was one of the best decisions in my life because it's a professional who is educated in helping you cope and deal with issues you can't overcome yourself. I think I heard Bryce Lewis say it was one thing you'd recommend to people was like to see a psychiatrist. And I was like, what? Really? And I was like, because it is shocking to people to think about that. And actually, just like I, I recently sent off, I, I, listeners might be interested, I'm going to get a blood panel done from MediCheck, mm -hmm. um, which I've been thinking about for a while. So I'm going to get one of those done and it might become a regular thing that I do like every six months or every three months or something. But something I'd be interested to see a psychiatrist because I think it would be valuable. I think yeah. it is something that people sh kind of shun. But actually, when I've done personality and tests and things, they've always been kind of like very interesting. So no, that's really interesting. And I think... We should probably try and draw a close because we have been an hour yeah, totally. and I feel like everyone's going to be like, oh, I like your guys talking, but uh, this is a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one last thing, and that is uh, making a little bit of plug here. Guys, remember, we are organizing a seminar 14th and 14th and 15th of July, right? Yes, 14th and 15th of July in London, Mike's Hotel, Jerry Feller, come over. They are talking about the scientific principles of advanced hypertrophy, but you don't have to be an advanced trainee to be there, right? So, um, yeah, the early bird tickets aren't available anymore so uh, it? it's it yeah today's the 13th yeah so uh yeah sorry that you missed the opportunity now you have to pay the full price but that's absolutely worth it anyway uh, i can highly recommend that because last year was already fantastic and this year will just be even better together with jared this time so double the amount of knowledge yeah it's going to be if you like these sort of chats like they do it a lot and um mike's really good for this sort of deeper thinking about just various aspects i think definitely so no it's gonna be an awesome day like i cannot wait for it it's gonna be so much fun to get everyone together again and do it and i just wish it could be even longer and we could do them more yeah. frequently but unfortunately they live in the u.s and not everyone wants to fork out 100 pounds every time to come and see them but it's definitely <laughs> worth your money and like pascal said actually i've had some messages where people are like can i do this if i'm not a pt or a coach and 
absolutely this is going to be practical information that you can apply to your own training so if you want hypertrophy and you enjoy listening to mike and you kind of understand the volume landmarks and things along those lines to a degree you're just going to get such a more kind of practical implementation of all of those and have the opportunity to ask your questions so i i can't wait for it it's going to be awesome totally sweet i think that's everything so we'll catch you soon guys thanks for listening to us do see you